Okay. This morning we need to calibrate, so analyze the status shows that the machine, this is the main page. Then we'll go to the inspection lockouts. The inspection lockouts, it's due to the fuel cap test that required. That's the only thing that's in red. Then you go to the simple system lockouts. Now we need leak check and gas calibration required. We're gonna go for the acceleration simulation lockouts. And it says that it's required the coast down only. Now we go to the dynamometer check. The dynamometer is fully op operational. Weather station. We're gonna see the temperature that is in here. 74 degrees, ambient temperature 60, barometric pressure 29. So relative humidity is 70.4. And we go to previews now. We're gonna start calibrating. In this case, we're gonna to go to previews. Now we're gonna to go to the analyzer manual. In this manual, you can see that we're gonna do different ones. We can today calibrate all or calibrate one at a time. We can do one calibration at a time. And today with us, Richard Ha is here with us, so he's gonna calibrate the first one, the fuel cap tester. We open the front and we're gonna get the calibration tester, which is the same one that we have in here. And he's going to place it into the adapter and hook it up just like that. The first one, it says, attach the calibration one to the hose coupling and set the valve and pass. So that's in the red one, so we need to turn it And he's turning to the red. Now it is. It says fuel cap tests are idle. Now continue. Now it is pressurizing the system and looking for a leak to see if it holds. So we're going to follow the prompts. Fuel cap tests are in progress. That's all it's doing. Pay attention because we're going to need to actually disconnect it. We're following the prompts pressure and inches of uh, water, mercury as well. It says detach the calibration one from the hose coupling, detach, remove. And that's what it's doing, it's cleaning up, it's completed. We're following the prompts. It says, now, next one, set the calibration one to the fail. So put it back in there, the one. Now turn it to the fail, and we select continue. And it's gonna do the same thing. Now, the machine is pre-calibrated to look for a leak on the red side and a pass on the green. And we're just looking for a complete fail in this case. So we're waiting. And we're going to follow the same thing, which is going to call for detaching the one to calibrate that. Now it says detach it, so he detaches it, and we'll look at the, over here the results, and it's complete. One calibration now. We're done, so we place the one back over here inside the shell, so now we go continue. Next one. It is the backup drive. The backup drive, it's an automatically check. It's nothing but a USB, no longer a floppy disk like they used to be. We used to have a floppy disk like this. Where the old machines used to have an old floppy disk. 
which was this machine which now we're retiring. We're taking it apart. That's the old machine. Now we just go ahead and hit check and it's already verified, it's done, and it's completed. It says that it has enough memory and everything. Next one, we're gonna do the calibration for the dyno. Then we're not gonna do warm up, we're not gonna do parasitics, we're just gonna go directly to the coast down. In this case, it says to clear the obstacles in the dyno, clear everything, and we have the dyno all clear. There's nothing in here to be obstructing. Now we hit stand and continue. And now it says star. Taking away the uh, air. And the dyno begins to turn. It will apply up to 32 miles per hour. And then it will actually create electro magnetic field that'll hold these coils and prevent them from turning those rollers. So we have about a total of 2,500 inertia weight. As you can see that our trainee is Richard Hot today. You can see the speed right here. It's gonna go up to 32, 33 miles per hour or so. So this is the new uh, generation three. Built in a printer. Only five gas cap adapters needed now. Since we are only testing gas cap for 95 and down 95 to 76 providing that we do have a gas cap adapter 2016 you can download the latest from the stand In the bottom you can see the gases that we're going to be using on the right side you have the zero air according to the uh contract, they're going to supply the high and the low, except for the zero air. The zero air must be purchased by the customers. And we will be calibrating also the low pressure EVA test machine over there. So we're going to calibrate the two, this one and that one. And it's getting there, 32. And that right there, puts the load into the dyno, right at 32 miles per hour. And there's a torque up to 91 kilopascals, horsepower, you can see that. Now it's gonna go to the second test, which is about 22 miles per hour. That's what we call it, two speed. So we're doing a second test right now.
And there you go. Now it's holding. They're at 22 miles per hour. As you can see that, it's going to tell us whether it passed. It's a Maha Dino, description on it. And it says that we're close, 2,000 pounds of inertia. That's what it applied. So we're going to close that. And it says that it has passed, it goes down. So we can go to the next one. And we can go to the previous one. We don't have to do the parasitic or the warm up. Previous. Now we're going to go to the analyzer leak check. What this entitles, as you can see in the picture, that we're going to take the probe. We're going to take the probe, as you guys can see that this is the one we're going to be closing and sealing with the red cap. That's close the red cap. Once it's inserted, we're going to say star. So what it's going to do is going to look for any leaks into the system. You can see there's low flow detected, holding vacuum. So it will squeeze the rubber cap and it will hold it for a few seconds. Remove the probe and the leak check has passed. Green is good, red is bad. Now we go to the next one. The next one is we need to calibrate gas analyzer. And so right now we're gonna wait until Mr. Richard High will come. And he will come and look at that. Come over here, that's okay. And we're gonna do for the gas analyzer leak check. I mean I'm sorry, the gas analyzer calibration. So now it's going to look for a zero error. It's a default. We can actually go into default. It says values may be typed directly or scan. So we can actually hit the default value. In this case, the one in the right. And everything will get populated automatically. Because they're assuming that either you're going to have a small bottle or a big bottle, likely a big bottle. And in this case, it's going to be those are the values. So you say save, continue. Now, with the scanner, we'll be scanning the low gases. In this case, sometimes it doesn't matter the procedure, whether you scan on any one, high and low, doesn't matter. Just as long as it will pick up everything. Now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and calibrate for high. So now we're gonna take high. And we gotta make sure also that the bottles are not expired. If they expire, they will be no longer good. Notice in the right hand side, they're not expired. It picks up all that information. And it seems like everything is good to go. Now, it states that we need to open all gas calibrations bottles, high and low. Select continue. So we're gonna open the bottles. Uh, gases and the zero air as well and we're gonna say continue it says before proceeding with calibration please confirm that the gas calibrations are properly connected and are not empty and the valves are fully open failure to do so 
may necessitate to service a call. Confirm. So we make sure that they're open. And we're just gonna wait for the zero air to complete. Today being November the 24th, it should require calibration in three days or 72 hours. So on the 27th, today being the Saturday morning, so it will be good for today, tomorrow Sunday, and Monday. So Monday night, before you go home, It'll need to be recalibrated so it'll be ready for Tuesday morning. So this way you don't have to calibrate on Tuesday morning when the vehicles are here in the morning and they need to be smoked. You already done so. So trying to get ahead of the game. Right now it's doing the zero air, getting the bench nice and clean. Timer pausing is expected. gas calibration so the bench is measuring low gases calibration Once it's finished with the low flow, it will allow to go to the next one. Flowing gases again. In total time so far, we're looking at least at 20 minutes calibration time, so you guys can figure out that that's how long it'll take to calibrate uh, 22, 23 minutes, we'll see. Now we're calibrating with the high gas. Coming to the end. Now the calibration for the high gases, levels of oxygen, nitrogen, hydrocarbons, and CO had been embedded into the calibration time. flashing the manifolds. Now we're closing the high and the low. The machine internal is doing that and it's getting rid of all the gases. The zero is, is used to clinch the manifold. There's a post calibration in progress and it's sealing everything.
So here we have a complete pass. Now we need to close the high and the low gas coloration. So we need to close them. I'm closing it right now. Now that they're closed, you need to leave the zero air open. And to confirm that we're ready to actually do this, we go to the inspection menu and we're gonna go select the smoke check. And it should be asking me now for a license to perform the full. And there you have it. Scan barcode on your technician badge and select manually for manually entry. So there you have it. After 22 minutes, we calibrate it. Thank you for watching.